Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Papillon. Papillon is brought to you by Colossal Games. It's for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Papillon is all about control. You want your butterflies to control the most flowers with the most butterflies for the most nectar points at the end of the game. But along the way, you have to manage your garden. You'll be drafting tiles to create the most beautiful gardens with the biggest flower bushes and capturing butterflies within your fields to gain more nectar at the end of the game. There's all kinds of ways to get nectar, but in the eight rounds, the player with the most nectar will win. Setup in this game is pretty straightforward. You're going to build out these beautiful 3D flower sets. And on the base, these bases are all randomly placed. So you never know which set of flowers is gonna get which points at the end of the game, but these points are designated by having the most control, the second and third. So uh, there's lots of ways to get points again in this game, like I said, but flowers, controlling them is definitely key. Now you're also gonna set up tiles for drafting on the main board along with gnomes get placed to show what round you're currently in. Some of the tiles that get placed will get caterpillars. Caterpillars are all about the currency of this world. Caterpillars are super important as you bid for position in going first to drafting those tiles. Now, each player is gonna receive a set of butterflies and a set of caterpillar coins to start the game. Also, each of these flower sets is going to receive a plus one butterfly token. We'll talk a little bit about what that means in a minute. Now, the game is divided into four phases, and at the end of eight rounds, then the game comes to an end. But the four phases are preparation, you're prepping this board, you're gonna be drafting tiles from this board, you're going to be gardening, building out your garden, and then finally the butterfly phase, which you'll be attaching butterflies to the different flowers. So in the preparation phase, it's all about setting up this board. You're going to be pulling tiles from the bag and placing them out in the corresponding spots. Any tile with a caterpillar on it is going to receive a caterpillar token and a, just kind of a bonus when you draft that particular tile, if you are lucky to do so. Then the gnomes, again, are going to show you what round you're on. You're going to move the gnome off the spot and flip it over. It's gonna reveal its value into its little gnome spot in the tile area. Again, when you're drafting oh, in the next phase, you have the potential of pulling this token, giving you more points at the end of the game. All right, now we're gonna to move to the drafting and bidding phase because here is where you're going to use the currency of the realm. You're gonna use the caterpillars to jockey for position in order to get the first chance at drafting whatever row and column of tiles that you might need for your garden. So you're gonna place bids based on what you think you might wanna do. So placing a bid of five caterpillars pretty much ensures you of being the first player in this round to draft tiles. Or you can bid zero. And if you do bid zero, there are bonuses shown here by getting extra caterpillars, but you are going to get the leftovers of the tiles out on the board. And then moving in turn order, you will draft tiles. You're looking at either a row or a column. You take all the tiles from that row or column and bonuses that may exist there, like you may get the bonus of the gnome if you pick that row or column. You may get bonuses of caterpillars if you happen to pick rows or columns that have extra coins on them. And so obviously what you're looking for here is tiles that are gonna be most advantageous to building out your garden. So during this draft, if you happen to be in a position where you only got to draft one tile from the board, well, you're not out of luck. You actually get to reach into the bag and pull a random tile, giving you two tiles to work with. Now it's time to garden. And all players will be doing this simultaneously. You'll take all the tiles that you drafted from this round and place them in your garden. Now you can't have any tiles off by themselves. They all have to be touching, but they all also have to match. You can't have mismatched flowers. So you're trying to though complete or close the same type of flower patches. And it has to be at least two tiles to do that. But the more tiles in a flower patch, the more points you're going to get at the end of the game or more nectar you're gonna get. So once you do close a flower patch, you'll take one of your butterflies and put it there. So to be used in the next phase. But there's also areas of open field that you try to close in butterflies icons that are out in your flower patch as well. Because again, that will give you more nectar points at the end of the game. Now that you've finished out placing your tiles and building your garden, 
perhaps closing patches, you take any butterflies from patches you've closed and based on the flower color, you're going to place that butterfly on the particular standee that matches that color. Now, the difference here is that the player who gets to do this first was the player that was last, the last one to draft tiles. So there are some advantages to not being first and different things here because it is about area control over these different flowers. Now, if you have a flower patch that only had two tiles, then you have to place that on a particular flower standee of that color. Now, if there's already nine butterflies there, then you have to move on to the next one of that color. But if you closed a flower patch of three or more uh, particular tiles, then you get this bonus token, the plus one butterfly. And that's gonna allow you to place an additional butterfly anywhere you want or move one from another flower standee to the current one, uh, things like that. So there's lots of options for placing these butterflies. And again, this is very much area control because at the base of these standees are points. You have first, second, and third. So you really are trying to gain control over these different flowers. Then after everyone has placed their butterflies in turn order, then you move to the end of the round. And there's a cleanup phase. Any tiles that are left out on the board or any bonuses that are left out on the board, including gnomes, are removed and put back in the box. These will not be used for the rest of the game. And then you go back to the preparation phase, setting up this board and advancing the round marker of the gnome. And then if this is the eighth round, the final round, then you're gonna go to scoring. And there are a ton of ways to get score in this game. So again, you have the spreadsheet, which is gonna kinda of help you outline all the different points and, and tabulate and calculate everything you're doing here. But there's all kinds of things, again, from having caterpillars to having the most butterflies um, on a standee. You know, you get points for the different values there. You get points for the largest fields, the largest flower patches, things of that nature. But this sheet really helps you keep track of everything. And again, the player with the most nectar is going to be the ultimate butterfly. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, I have to say, this is just such an incredibly beautiful game, and I feel like it's pretty accessible for folks getting into this area control. It all kind of makes sense. The tiling, the building of the gardens, it's very puzzly, definitely. However, there is a lot of scoring to do at the end of the game, which might feel a little daunting to some new players. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like a game that might be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, We'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.